This video is going to show the derivation of how a force transforms relativistically. For that, what we're going to start with is we're going to start with a frame of reference, x, y, z, and this is what we're drawing here. We're going to label it x, y, and z. And the origin is going to be O sub 1 because it's the origin of our first frame of reference. Then we are going to have a frame of reference that's going to be O2. We're going to draw it in blue here. It's going to share the same x-axis, but we're going to label it x, y, and z. And we're going to call this one frame of reference 2. He is going to actually be moving in the positive x direction a velocity v which we denote by v, a scalar, times the unit vector i. And we're also going to go ahead and draw in some streamers to show that he is indeed in, in motion. Now, it's a constant motion. Uh, this is why we're talking about special relativity here. And uh, to make it easier, we're going to go ahead and put the label 2 in this frame of reference, x sub 2, z sub 2, y sub 2. And we're going to go ahead and label this one with 1, because he is the frame of reference 1, x sub 1, y sub 1, z sub 1. Now, a force in this frame of reference 2 is going to be here, and the components of that force can actually be broken down, of course, into an x, y, z, just like any any component. So we're going to have these components right here of this force. Similarly, and let's go ahead and label that force F2, force in the second frame of reference, as seen in the second frame of reference. Observer 1 in the first frame of reference is also going to see that force, and he's going to be calling it F1. Now, the exercise here is going to be, how are these two related? Well, we can say that F1, and we're going to go ahead and draw everything in blue from now on, will be X1 I plus Y1 J hat plus Z1 K hat, where X of 1, Y sub 1, and C sub 1 are the x, y, and z components of this force. F2 is going to be x2, y2, z2, k, hat, j, hat, i, hat. Before we proceed and uh, figuring out the relationship between one force and the other, which is the goal of this exercise, we're going to take some time to show that these results are not going to be derived here, but have been derived elsewhere, can be derived elsewhere, and uh, we'll just go ahead and take them as given. The momentum in frame of reference 1 in the x direction equals to gamma. Remember, this is 1 over v over c quantity squared square root uh, times this momentum in the second frame of reference, x direction, plus v, the velocity of propulsion of our second frame of reference, divided by c, the speed of light, and times e sub 2, the energy in the second frame of reference. Similarly, we say p sub 1 y and p sub 1 z equals to p sub 2 y, p sub 2 z. There's a fourth equation that we could write here relating energy, uh, but we're not going to do that here because that would take us too far to the side. So then the other thing to say is the other equation we're going to be not deriving here, but noting and using in this derivation is the derivative with respect to time in the second frame of reference of energy in the second frame of reference. It can be shown that this is equal to x2, v sub 2x plus y2, v sub 2y, plus 
z2 v sub 2 z so this result and these results here are not going to be derived in this work but they can be derived elsewhere next what we're going to do then concentrate on the transformation of a force transformation of a force has as its motivation the fact that we're going to be applying this to the electric field and therefore the electric force later and, uh, and see how that transforms under the relativistic uh, Lorentz transformations. We start with Newton's second law, which we all recognize there, and we start applying our frames of reference to it. So we'll go like this. Specifically, we're gonna go ahead and say x sub one, remember, x sub one, is the component of the force of one in the frame, first frame of reference, the x component of the force here in the i hat direction. So x of one equals two d dt one p sub one x. Easy enough. Now we apply the chain rule d dt two p sub one x times dt two dt one. That's simply the chain rule. Uh, next, what we have is we have d dt2 times the expression for p sub 1x, which we have in our first uh, set of equations here. Again, one of the ones that we're not going to be deriving in this, in this work. We can just go ahead and plug this in. This is going to be in terms of the second frame of reference, x direction, plus v e2 over c squared. And close the curly brackets. Times this term right here, dt2 over dt1. Uh, we can go ahead and take the derivative inside, and what we can say is gamma times d p 2 x dt2 plus v over c squared times d e2 d t2. Times this term, dt2 over dt1. A couple of things to notice in passing and this one is x1, the component of the force in the x direction. Notice that we have this term right here, which was one of the terms that can be derived elsewhere from the first page. And now we have to worry about this term right here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll figure that one out. And for that, we'll look at this. Using the Lorentz transformations for time is, we can say dt1 over dt2 is equal to d dt2 of gamma times t2 plus v over c squared times little x2. And that's not the big X, so we shouldn't get confused there. And this is equal to, we can go ahead and take the derivative inside. We say gamma times dt2, dt2, which of course is going to be one in the next step, plus v over c squared times dx in the second frame of reference, dt second frame of reference. Like we said, we can go ahead and put that one as a one. And this term right here will define as the velocity in the second frame of reference in the x direction. 
Next, we go back to our expression for x1. Now that we have this expression for dt1, dt2, and we're gonna use the inverse of that expression. So what we can say here then is, this is equal to gamma times dp 2x dt2 plus gamma times b over c squared times d e2 dt2 times, and this is the inverse that we're looking at right here that we found in this expression. So the gamma is outside, and then we have 1 plus v over c squared times v sub 2x. A few simplifications that we can do here, gammas cancel. And the other thing that we can say right here is that this expression right here is x2, okay? So rewriting our expression, we end up with the following, x1 equals to x2 plus v over c squared times this expression. Well, it's right now a derivative, but we're going to replace it with a, a full, the full expression that we have from, from the beginning of the derivation. And the, the uh, denominator is the same. Okay, so at this point then, we are ready to find out what DE2, DT2 gets us. Go ahead and say, start a little bit to the left here, X1 equals to X2 plus V over C squared, V sub 2X times X2 plus v over c squared times the y's, y2, v sub 2y, plus the z's, z2 times v sub 2z. And the denominator again continues the same. And this is again having the 2x velocity and the second frame of reference in the x direction there. You can see now that we can factor out an x2 from the first set of terms. We can say x2, 1 plus v over c squared times v sub 2x plus v over c squared times the y's and the z's term. And the numerator is that. The denominator is going to be the same as down here. What we can do here then is cancel these two fellows here and here. So that one goes away. We'll leave that one there because he's still being used by the second term. And then what we can write down here is x2 plus v over c squared times the y's and times the z's. And down here, we have this denominator term, but we're going to go ahead and do something in passing. We're going to factor 1 over c squared from it. So that gives us c squared, that's how we get the one up there, plus v times v sub 2x. And why did we do that? Well, what we can do now is we can cancel the one over c squared here. And we have an expression then for x sub one in term of the second frame of reference, which is what we're looking for. So that's all good. Now, what about, let's go ahead and put this up. What about the y? Well, the y is 
not that much different. We go from here again, and we notice that the heavy lifting was done in the X term. The Y and the Z term should be fairly straightforward. So let's try that. So what we're gonna do here for the Y now is we're gonna go ahead and say Y sub one, the component in the first frame of reference of the force is going to equal to, again, by Newton's second law, dp one y dt in the first frame of reference, which again, invoking the chain rule becomes the following. And in passing, then we can say that we know what this guy is, just like in the previous expression, we have that one as this inverse, one over gamma times one plus V over C squared times V sub two X, because X is the direction that the frame of reference to was being, was being moved in, constant velocity. This term right here, because of the expression that we saw at the beginning, transforms straightforwardly, dp 2y dt2, which is really y sub 2. So in a nutshell, we can say that y sub 1 equals to y sub 2 over gamma 1 plus v over c squared times v2x. So summarizing then, we have the force, force components in the first frame of reference, x1, y1, z1, it's a typo, in terms of the force components in the second frame of reference. So we've completed what we needed to do we can see how the force transforms. The force has totally been arbitrary at this point. Uh, we are looking at concentrating on the electromagnetic force, but it should be noted that any force will transform in this particular way relativistically.